Things bad. Uh, how can all the openings be bad? I mean, some <laughs> openings are less bad than others, right? Okay, so so like, uh, which which opening do you take as a measurement, as as a like ground zero of all the bad openings? Ah, like the first, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I think uh, there is a Benoni, but there's even a worse type of Benoni in it, okay? It's called a check Benoni. Oh, yes, which, that's horrible. <laughs> which basically is like you take the worst part of the king's in there and you put it in the worst part of Benoni and you're mixing them <laughs> and say, I'll play now. <laughs> it's the what worst. What about Bone Cloud? What about Bone Cloud? Oh, Bone Cloud. Good? Oh, yes, of course. I mean, I cannot say this on Hikaru stream, you know, come on. <laughs> this will be my last stream on Hikaru's channel if I say Bone Cloud is very bad. <laughs> No, I mean you can have an opinion. No, you you can definitely say <laughs> and you definitely can say that the bone cloud is better than the Che Benoni. <laughs> that's yeah, that's you that you can do. <laughs> now that I think is a close fight. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> I wonder if you can add uh, King G7 in the Benoni. In the Benoni, I think you can get away with it actually. I mean in the <laughs> Che Benoni, it's so bad it, it doesn't change anything. Okay. But they're talking about bad. <laughs> it looks like Artemis' portion is lost. Or did yeah, he finish already? No, he, yeah, they resigned. he resigned. Ah, he resigned, yeah. yeah. Oh, so the Magnus did win. And by the way, I'm yeah. live on my channel as well. Hi, guys. Hi, chat. Uh, I just went live, like, you know, without any warning. <laughs> so mm -hmm. I just wanted to tell a quick hi to them. Well, we did warn uh, your your Discord, by the way. I, <laughs> I might <laughs> have told them. <laughs> ah, thanks for that. Thanks for doing that. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, sorry, yeah. a quick question for this uh, King's Indian, because the Petrosian variation, what uh, Kasai is sort of playing with this Bishop G5, it wasn't used to be that popular, nor thought as venomous. How did people realize it's good? Like uh, the system with white? Yeah, that what white system? is playing, yeah. Uh, I think Petrosian just won so many games that people had to take it seriously, right? Oh, okay. Because he, that's true. He, he, he did say that Kings Indian fed his family, and yeah. he's very grateful to everyone who played Kings Indian <laughs> against him. So <laughs> yeah, that kind of uh, reminds me of um, I I don't know if it I think it was Aliahin who said, "Oh, my opponent like somebody is saying to Aliahin, my opponent is playing the Dutch. Don't dare stop him." From playing a Dutch. <laughs> It'd be exactly. your loss. This reminds me of a story. So once we had like an Indian team championship somewhere. I don't name the players because I mean you might not know them. So they were analyzing the game and there was one player who has a very strong personality. Okay. He has mm -hmm. he's very convicted. Like he, he says everything with a lot of conviction. Mm -hmm. So he goes, he just moves the pieces around the board and he says it was F5 is a mistake. F5 is a mistake. And then everyone is confused. When F5? When F5? And then he says, the first move, F5. D4, F5 was a mistake. That's why I lost the game. <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> so everyone got confused and he blames the Dutch defense. So it doesn't have a great reputation, let's say. Oh my God. This is turning into an opening bashing stream. <laughs> All right. Oh, uh, so is there a mic issue, by the way? I hear, see my chat saying that there's kind of an echo. Do you guys hear it as well? No. No. Maybe Sorry. you have the. Maybe you have a doubled, uh, doubled audio. Um, we we actually we will let with it fix uh, fix the issues while we are on a short break because we have Hikaru joining us in just a couple of minutes. Whoa! So, oh, we'll awesome. see you. We'll see you in a couple of minutes, guys. Yeah. Okay, so. The music for them. Don't forget, we are still live on my channel, so be careful. Okay. <laughs> okay, yeah, so, you can okay. <laughs> yeah, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna ask a sneak peek question then. So you saw the opening of the Carlson game? Um, yeah, yeah, I did see. I did see. Yes. yes. So I, I was just wondering, this B five idea was. I it seems to me like a new twist. Like usually everyone takes on C five without the second thought. 
Yeah, this is uh, like the Tara Shok thing, right? Yeah. And they play bishop c5, knight c5, queen a5 check. And yeah. then they play this queen d2, queen takes c5, and some e3, and they exchange queens eventually. So this b5 move was new for me. Yeah. Um, did he play very quickly? No, it seems like uh, it took three minutes. Well, because he got disconnected. Yeah, oh. yeah, yeah. He disconnected twice, actually. So yeah, yeah he was really on. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so he was gambiting yeah, a pawn, and then he gambited his time. So this was like a triple oh, okay. gambit. Yeah, yeah, and oh. then yeah, then yeah, he. I think he blundered this bishop c five. Okay, Paris joining. Oh. Um. Yeah, so we have space on the stream only for three people. All right, uh, so I'll go out then. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> Dennis. No worries. I mean, I could also I could also hide myself and. Uh, and you guys have fun, and three of you, whatever you prefer. No, you can just leave me hidden for now. That's fine. No, 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 no. I cannot hide you. No. <laughs> <laughs> it's your <laughs> Hikaru you just can't be hidden. <laughs> okay, Dennis. Then, All then right. uh, I'll see you tomorrow. All right. Same Bye, time. Guys. Thanks, Dennis. Bye, Vinit. Thank you. Take care. Bye. By the way, Hikaru, I just need to warn you. Yes. That you're still live on my channel, so <laughs> just. Oh no, 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 it's 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 all good. No worries. Yeah, that's fine. All right. You're you're still on YouTube, right? Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm still yeah. on YouTube, being very faithful. Yeah, no, no, I was just asking because <laughs> um, I, I heard like I think Anish was supposedly streaming on Twitch yesterday or something, so that's why I was asking. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Anish does crazy weird stuff, which nobody knows <laughs> why. <laughs> 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 I mean, we all know oh. that. <laughs> so I stopped a long time trying to make sense of what Adish does. And it is mm. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's, that's true. So are, are you playing any tournaments? What's going on? What's, um, what's been happening? I play the Olympia, the online Olympia, mm -hmm. um, which begins. So I'll be traveling tomorrow morning uh, for that. Ah, uh, you need to be at the same place with the team. Yeah, yeah. We we play uh, from the same place. We'll play uh, from Okay. Uh, I will just go back uh, online on sure, that's fine. on Hikaros, and you can continue talking. Okay. And we're yeah. back. We're back, guys. Hi, Hikaru. How's it going, Maria? How's it going, Vidit? Awesome. <laughs> we were just waiting for you. I was not sure if you'd join, uh, because it's quite early there. But I'm glad that you did. It's, well, it's it's nine forty two, so it's not not too early, I guess. Uh, it you, depends. You are not jet lagged after the. Well, trip? no, because uh, because in South America, it's it's basically only uh, two hours ahead of West Coast. So it's, it's I mean it's it's a different continent, but the time zone is the same basically. I guess the travel itself can be just exhausting. True, true. Yeah, but I I feel I feel pretty good. So. Okay. Yeah, it's gonna. It's nice. hopefully we'll we'll get an exciting third game. So it looks like uh, Magnus is just mopping mopping it up so far, right? Yeah, well, Artemis was very unlucky in the first game where he just disconnected for a while, and I think that played a crucial uh -huh. role. And mm -hmm. where he blundered, I I think he blundered that uh, Bishop C5. So wait, uh, what's the score in now? In two the zero, match? I think, right? Yeah, it is two zero. Ah, so, so it the can be over. Be short. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, this yeah, could be the could last game. Thank, thanks, or well, or because of uh, withdrawal of Valereza from the match for third place, and because of the this disconnection, yeah, it can be really, really short day, and it's it's a pity. Is, is, this, where I give a, is this where I give a hot take or not? <laughs> well, uh, we can we can still keep, stay uh, and watch the the game of Levy, of mm -hmm. course. For right. A bit. <laughs> yeah, I, I think I think I, I think I think what I'll, I'll I'll start by saying one thing first though, which is that I mean to me it's uh, kind of insane, um, like crazy insane and, and highly disrespectful that that Ali Reza just just withdraws from with just withdraws and doesn't play this match. I mean, if I if I think back through like the number of tournaments I've played, like right off there's only one occasion I can think of where someone withdrew from a tournament. Uh, and this is over the board, mind you, where someone really didn't feel well. And that was like when Morozevich uh, withdrew from this tournament that I played in Bill. And I think 2000 mm. and like, I want to say like 2006 or something. It was like many, many I, years ago. I remember ago. that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, 
And like, I literally can't think of any other example where someone withdrew. I mean, I've seen people not feel well, try to make quick draws and all these other things, but I've never seen someone withdraw. And so to like withdraw from an online event, especially where like there's no one else around, I mean, I think is, uh, it's just absurd. I, I'm just shocked that, that like, that it's allowed. That's what I would say. Actually, I uh, did consider withdrawing from the same event <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> because I was really in a terrible condition. Like I couldn't get up from my bed. So oh, that was before I it began, can... right? Yeah, before it began. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. That, that's, of course, very normal. So I do can I mean, I can understand why he might have withdrawn. But yeah, it is kind of strange uh, indeed. So you think it's not right? I, I mean, I, I guess, like, I'll, I'll use an example. Um, I, I played in the U.S. Championship, and I think it was 2000, and um, I think it was 2012, if I remember correctly. And um, and it was, like, probably the fourth round. I think it was, like, the fourth round. I felt really, really bad. And um, I, I had to play with the white pieces against Gregory Kaidanov. And for, like, this whole game, I had, like, a terrible headache. I had some, like, actual, like, I want to say like heart palpitations and things like this and um and i still played the game and you know i went to the emergency room after the game but i still played the game i mean i, I still played the game um regardless so i don't know to me it's just like i mean i don't know that's, that's i mean you need game. you need to be in really really bad condition and probably uh he knew it much earlier than he tweeted then that, sure. Yeah, that, that's that's just my hot take for the day. Is that I just I don't know. It, it just seems very weird. Also, because Ali Rez is playing this tournament in Norway in two days as well, right? Or I don't Ooh. know if it's two yep. days, but he's playing this tournament in Norway very soon. So, I I just I just I don't know. It's it just it feels, feels kind fishy. of weird to me. <laughs> yeah. Oh, makes sense. Makes sense. Yeah. I know that's so. Oh. That's just my take new control yeah i hope if he's really sick he's not going to come here <laughs> if i'm allowed to say that <laughs> no but that's that's a good point because yeah if he if he is really sick then he should then then yeah you would assume that it has to be something where he has to where he has to withdraw from norway chess but we'll see we'll see okay yeah i mean preparing i mean it makes sense to to, to focus on on uh, on another event when you lost all the chances for for winning this one, but then I guess you should be open about it with uh, with the real reasons. I mean, yeah. But I not mean, sure. you just can't. I'm do not that. a player, so yeah. <laughs> uh, anyway, yeah. Game game is story. Yeah, I guess. exactly. So, yeah, in my chat let's, let's watch the game. Same. It's very hard situation for our team here, though. Like to be in must win now uh, after two mm -hmm. games I mean, realistically it's very very tough to get back even if you win this game which is <laughs> first of all a very tough thing to do to win on demand yeah i think um someone did this though didn't wesley do this against wesley. magnus a couple wesley. tournaments ago yeah oh, yeah only wesley has done it i think he was yeah. two down and then he won two games in a row with black mm -hmm. and white both yeah it was insane i was very impressed when right. i saw that yeah, I mean, there, of course, there's also the other fabulous example from the World Cup where uh, Sergei did it against Peter Svidler in classical chess, which I'll never understand. Oh, yes. yeah. In the World Cup finals, Baku. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and he was also completely losing that game. Mm -hmm. Right, and... but I mean, if you're losing, it, I mean, it doesn't matter because you're so far behind. But it's just, it's, I just remember that, and that was just, yeah, I'll, that maybe the greatest uh, comeback you'll ever see. Yeah, that that was really crazy. Like, I, I, I was mm -hmm. there at the time, yeah. and I... I mean, the tension which was there when, when Swidler wandered, it, it just was uh, completely uh, uh, overwhelming. Like, yeah. like it's, it's like when it's everything is electric around you, it's just, mm -hmm. just crazy. Right. So what, what do we have so far? We have it's what, English? English. Yeah. I think he will play either G6 or Knight C7. I think those are the standard moves, um, mm -hmm. basically to play E5. Um, sooner or later. I think we had a game, no? Hikaru here. I played knight c7 against you. Well, I mean, of course you did, because Anish also played knight c7 against me. So. <laughs> I don't think it was related, but yeah. <laughs> I did play knight c7 in this champion's chess tour itself. Oh, h4. Here I have. Yeah, I, I was going to say, I thought, I thought that g6 allows more, like, more complicated play versus knight c7, which I thought was a bit more. Um, 
like I, I don't I don't want to say stable, but I feel like the chances of creating a mess on the border are lower with knight c7 versus g6. Mm, I'm not so sure. I think in knight c7 also there are some crazy lines. Um, here I think I have pl I had a game with Ding Liren, Ding Lijen, and I played bishop to g4 here with black to stop h5. When I played it, it was novelty. I don't know if it has been repeated since then. But mainly, uh, most of the people play h6. Mm -hmm. That kind of helps white because eventually he goes this d3, bishop d2, queen c1 kind of stuff. And then h6 is kind of a weakness. Right. So I'm curious actually what Magnus will do. And if you play bishop g4 and h5 and uh, bishop takes, can you sack a uh, second exchange or is it too much? Probably it's too much, but it, it is an idea maybe. But okay, Magnus played h6, so he's, he's not really in the mood for any of that, clearly. Yeah, yeah, yeah he played h6. Yeah, I mean, he only needs, uh, I think, only needs a half a point out of two games, so. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, I guess for white, you probably have to go d3, bishop d2, and some kind of queen c1, maybe, because I, otherwise, I don't understand the point of h4. Um... I mean, either you have to go d3 or d4, I think, uh... I mean, I, I don't play this line, but just thinking about it conceptually, it seems like uh, it seems like I, you have to go d3 or d4. I don't see any other real idea, because otherwise h4 is just misplaced because you allow bishop g4. Mm -hmm. I think um, d3 makes more sense, because d4 would just peter everything, right? Into very I, I assume so, but I mean, more to me, I'm just being like, conceptually, it feels like you have yeah. to justify the h4 move. So, like, when I look at candidate moves, I can only see d4 or d3. I I mean maybe something like well queen b3 doesn't make sense because now you don't have knight g5 ever so I, I mean I would think yeah, yeah, yeah to me yeah, d3 yeah. seems like the only move yeah yeah also there is there are ideas like you can take on d5 and then go d3 bishop e3 kind of stuff maybe there mm -hmm. this h6 could be um, targeted in some way true yeah yeah it feels like you have to make some use of this h4 h6 move being thrown in because you give up the g4 square in all these positions right right it's strange that artemy was thinking already because this is like the starting position of the opening mm -hmm. yeah it's kind of actually it is strange that he's thinking but i will say i don't recall artemy of playing a lot of these sorts of structures i feel like he very much likes to play like the double d double fianchettos like b3 and g3 and stuff of this nature i can't recall him really playing a lot of these sort of like uh mainline english englishes um so it, it is possible that uh yeah he might that he's so. just mm -hmm. like he's trying something but he, he's not 100 percent sure which line you know what to do here oh uh, i wanted to ask you a question actually uh, mm -hmm. what what do you think of Artemius' performance? Like he won the prelims and now mm -hmm. also he's in the finals. I mean, he's not the guy you would you, who you would pick um, before the tournament, but he has been consistently doing well. And I guess you played quite a bit of blitz with him, I guess, online. Yeah, I, I think what I would say about Artemiev is that, um, I mean, he's very consistent. And he's just like one of these guys who um, who just flies under the radar because he doesn't get I, I would say he doesn't get that many opportunities. I, I think um, for a lot for a long time it feels like I was saying that he should have gotten some invitations to play in the play in these events over like say a Sergey Sergey or, or Daniil Dubov specifically because they're the other two Russian players who were getting the invites over him. Um, and and I mean I've I've played him quite a lot of blitz. I played I played him in a, a match uh, after the Gibraltar turn. I want to say in twenty I think it was twenty. 2019 might have been 2018 i'm not sure you mean offline um, blitz like not yeah i mean after the there was like a whole closing ceremony and and everything and it was it was very funny because basically vladislav and i we were just sitting in the lobby of the of the coletta hotel in gibraltar i, I mean i'm sure i mean you know you know what i'm talking yeah, about yeah of course yeah. but like just for the just for the audience and um and so we we're just sitting in the lobby playing there was a bunch of like there was like a boom box there was music people were drinking and we we're just there playing like this like 15 game blitz match and um I, I think I won the match, but it was like, I think I won by like one point. It was, it was a very, very close match. Um, and he's always been someone that I've thought is quite dangerous. He's just, because he's not very flashy in terms of his style and um, he doesn't really have that same kind of presence um, in the way that a lot of the other Russian players do, I feel like he gets overlooked. Right, right. He does get overlooked, I feel. Is it possible that it's social media uh, presence that uh, gives an advantage to other players? 
I, what I do you mean, say Maria? I feel I like it's personal I, attack. <laughs> I, I mean, when you look at when you look at Dubov, I mean, I'll give you an example. When you look at Dubov's style, I mean, he has a lot of very flashy games. Like he he'll win yeah. some great games, he'll also lose some games. But it, it's that sort of flashy style, and I think it's more that than anything else. Um, that really sort of sort, sort of uh, is is the reason that you see. I, it. I think also Ali Reza, yeah, he has a lot of fans because of his uh, playing style. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Also, Dubov, I think, at some point had a uh, lot of people rooting for him because at that time it was very new what he used to do, like some kind, come up with some kind of uh, crazy mm-hmm. Catalan and then always win against Magnus somehow. But yeah, it makes sense because of his style. Could be. Yeah, I, I think it's a style thing for sure. And I mean, that's one of the hardest things about being like, being in Russia or being, I think nowadays, even in the United States is that there's so many players who are in this like 2700 rating range and it's like organizers have to always like just look and pick players and and many cases based on style more than anything like i mean but, if, you, if you look at the russians like you, i mean artemiev has done great in these events but you still you're, it's kind of difficult because if you look at it you have dubov um I, i'm gonna say karyak and he's he draws a lot of games although he's, he's been doing he did really well in the world cup but like you have, you have dubov karyak and you also have like estepenko who's done very well um, on top of that. So it's like you have, you, you have those three players and Artemiev and even like Grishchuk, for example. So you have like five Russian players and the number of players who can get invited to an event is like maybe two. So it's yeah. very, it's very, uh, it's very, um, it's, it's very, it's very difficult. Yeah. If he was from a different country, it would help in getting a lot of invitations. Right. Um, and by the way, Chad is just, Chad is right. I, I forgot about a certain Jan Nomniachi as well. <laughs> there's, there's him too. So yeah, there, there are a lot. Yeah. It's easy to forget now. <laughs> <laughs> no, well, of course, Snepo is going to get a lot of invitations, but uh, the thing is he probably will turn down a lot of them uh, for a while, but uh... Actually, yeah. it's funny the approach uh, both Magnus and uh, Nepo have. Nepo basically stopped playing once he knew that he's playing the World Championship. And Magnus, on the other hand, played the World Cup and he is playing all these online events as well. So mm-hmm. it's a very different approach. He probably wants to be more sharp and in, in line. And I think when you play World Championship match for the first time, it must also be like, you know, I want to prepare really well, like, lot of training mm-hmm. camps and stuff like this it yeah I, I think be... go ahead maria yeah sorry no it might be it, it just might be difficult for nepo as uh, as you said yeah that, that it's the first time he's playing the match um it, it's more difficult for him to distinguish like uh, like because you are memorizing a lot of new lines right with, with like novelties and you are preparing for the match and then you need to play online and to not to reveal what you what you prepare and obviously magnus already is uh almost an expert in this uh mm-hmm. after after his all of his matches uh three matches um so yeah maybe it's just psychologically more difficult for nepo yeah i i mean i think it's it's funny though because like from i think when i when i played in the canada's tournament in 20 i think it's 2016 now um like the whole mood going into it was like i have to play a new opening play something different surprise my opponents and then play like a play like a sort of secondary repertoire in tournaments and um and i think that i'm like i did really well before before the candidates with my secondary repertoire i think i won gibraltar zurich and um I won some other third event as well. I can't remember what it was. So I won like three events before before the uh, before the candidates tournament, and then with the repertoire that I intended to play in the candidates, I did terribly. So ha- having had that experience, to me, I think it's it's kind of a little, little bit of nonsense. Personally, I think basically you should just like play your openings, but just don't don't think too much and just just go with the flow. And I think that's what Magnus is definitely doing. I thought he's trying to hide or like at least confuse uh, Nepo's team about what he's going to play. Usually Magnus <laughs> has a broad reporter, so he can jump. Uh, so I, so I doubt think... that it would be the same. Like he just played Berlin in one of the games against yeah. Levon, I think. And also King he Dizian. usually doesn't do it. So Yeah, you think he's using online chess like kind of a mind games? Like, I mean, if you see, see, if you're in Nepo's team and you see Magnus has played Berlin, even though you know that it might be unlikely, you will still check it. Maybe you will spend a couple of days or weeks preparing it. 
so you know it can be a ploy to throw throw your opponent off or he might I minus mean, might end up playing and they might think that he did not mm-hmm. really want to play it it was just a rapid event nobody cared <laughs> so it it could be either way i have i mean i think in terms of magnus i think in many ways he just doesn't care um not to use the classic <laughs> line but i think he's just like i think he has a general <laughs> idea of what he wants to do in the match but like right now i don't think it's like I'm guarant- like I'm gonna play the Queen's Indian, for example. I'm gonna play the Queen's Indian every single game in the match, and so I'll just play everything else under the sun. I think he probably has like two or three ideas of what he wants to do, like against D4 and maybe against E4. And it's like I'll, I'll just avoid those two or three things, but you know, we'll we'll see how it goes as we get closer to the match specifically. That's my guess. True, true, true. could be, could be. Also, he. I mean, we'll he... find out. Obviously, like I mean, someone's right. We we just don't know who. By the way, the game. Uh, just getting back to the game, it looks pretty. Uh, it just looks very, very standard comfortable. now, unfortunately. Yeah. Very comfortable yeah, the, for black, I think. The, the game of Levy actually is heating up. He just mm-hmm. played f5, and uh, yeah, it's, it does look like kind of an attack by black. Yeah, this this Ooh. looks, I mean, for Magnus, I, I think he's completely fine. I think h4 has done nothing here. Because if you're going to play h4, h6, you really have to justify it somehow, and it doesn't look, um, it just doesn't look like... I mean, it doesn't make sense. You haven't you haven't justified it, and so it can only be a weakness. I think. I think now you can just take on b4, I suppose, mm-hmm. a b, and then maybe play something like knight d4. Yeah, he yeah. goes it directly. Yeah, this looks just completely fine. You capture on d4, bishop g2, king g2, bishop d. No, you can't take with the bishop. Maybe just queen d4. Yeah, queen d4. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's so Ooh. hard to see there being anything for white here, right? I was thinking knight e6. Is it an option after bishop g2? Knight e6. Ah, because queen d5, you have knight f4. Nice. To force a double pawn. That could be a move. Actually, it doesn't seem bad. Yeah, and it, since he's not taking on g2, he's not obviously considering uh-huh. it. Aha. But you know, uh-huh. there is a very nice move after knight e6. It is. It is a very nice move, yeah. Mm-hmm. After knight e6, so... black can play queen d7. <laughs> Oh, and queen h3. Oh, Neither man. Could... <laughs> I, I like to show this to the chat. Uh, so knight e6, queen, queen d7. Yeah, Yeah, because knight of 8 boom, to h3. Ah. That's cool. If you move the knight. If you Did take they G7, play? Right? No, he didn't play. And queen h3, wow, this is beautiful. No, but the, th- the thing is, since Artemiev is thinking here, I think it's very likely he'll play knight e6. I mean, the longer you think, instead of just snapping it, I mean, there's only one other move you can consider. I think that makes it much more likely. True, true. Yeah, yeah, it is very likely. But after knight e6, if black finds queen d7, he's kind of okay. Yeah, that, that just looks like it's very dry. Yeah, right, Magnus right. will find it. Oh, oh, it's played. Knight e6 is played. It's played? I don't know. I get a bit of a delay when it comes to the moves. Uh, yeah, the, he did play. And he plays queen D. Yeah, yeah, yeah actually, sorry. I, just have, I, have the, play, I, have, yeah. I have the actual board open on the, on the other uh, monitor. And yeah, so that's yeah, why I'm a little ahead. Yeah, 96, queen D7. Of course, Magnus plays it. Yeah, of course, yeah. Now you can't do much. You have to play king G2, mm-hmm. queen E6, and then maybe you play. You try to politics. play on the split pawns, I guess, but man, it's. So yeah, little. it's very little, especially in must-win game. Yeah. Yeah, it is very difficult to to convert this. No, I mean I think this will be a draw within like five minutes. Maybe not five minutes, but very soon. Then what do we do for the rest of the stream? <laughs> Watch <laughs> Levi's game. <laughs> we have to call Alireza. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Jack Back was June. confused. Uh, what what when we were speaking about Alireza? I'll just like to catch them up. Like, Ali Reza tweeted, that's all I know, that he withdrew from the tournament because of health issues and he didn't play today's match. Uh, I mean, I, is that the only official source on Twitter? Uh, yeah, Chess24 tweeted, congratulations to Aranyan, that, uh, that Ali Reza had to withdraw. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's all we know. I wonder if Ali Reza will go stream tonight. <laughs> that would but actually i don't see it i'm looking at his tweets and replies and i, I don't see any it just says had a great time playing 
but I'm unable to play in the last few, days, last few days of the event. That's all it says. It doesn't say anything more. Yeah, hmm. he said unable to play. Ah, maybe he didn't cite health reasons. Ah. Maybe he's told it to Chess24. I'm not sure. Unable to continue. Yeah, there is nothing about health issues, but... Interesting. Would it be the same if it was the finals? That's the question. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's the question. <laughs> get well soon. Well, everyone is saying get well. I am unable to play, but then everyone is saying in the comments, get well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, I mean, who, who knows? Who knows? When does, when does Norway start, by the way? Uh, on Tuesday. On Seven. Tuesday, and today is Saturday? Yeah. Okay. Uh, supposedly, he should be arriving tomorrow. Most of the players are arriving tomorrow because on the 6th, they have some kind of semi-media day. Hmm. Mm -hmm. They sign some boards and... Oh, what is the actually, lineup? Actually, I, I am in the, in the commentary room for the tournament, and you can see the... This will be like press room and there are the, the boards for signing. So I am currently warming up the, the chair for Judith Polgar. <laughs> ah, she's doing the commentary, yeah? Uh -huh. Yeah, she will be doing the commentary. And what is the lineup of Norway? Just curious. Uh, it's uh, Karyaki, Nepo, uh, Magnus, uh, Ariantari, Alireza and Richard Rapport. Mm. It's double okay. round robin. Ah, interesting. Rappo has been getting a lot of uh, in top level invitations nowadays. I see him quite. And he plays only these events. He hardly plays in uh, offline events, from what I see. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I think he played Serbian League. Um, or Well, he said he went there, but maybe it was only his wife who was playing. Yeah, I think I think Rapport's getting a lot of invitations because he's gotten a very high rating, but he's also an unknown quantity. Like he plays a lot of, or I mean, at least in the past, he used to play a lot of wild chess. Um, but also, he just hasn't gotten a lot of invites to top level events. So when he has this really high rating, he's young, has what I would say is an exciting style, and and no invitations, it, it makes a lot of sense. Yeah, yeah, he has a pretty high rating, twenty seven sixty or something. Mm -hmm, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it, it makes sense. He's, he's getting opportunities. And I, I mean, I, to me, at least, I think he deserves them, certainly. So, okay, so what, what happened in the game? We still have Bishop E3, right? So it's still mm -hmm. Magnus's move. Mm -hmm. I mean, I assume C4 is probably a draw, somehow. I think he's just worried about the A7 pawn in some lines, yeah. I guess. Otherwise, I don't so, see any reason why not to play C4. Uh, wait, so C4, Bishop A7, Rook A8, you're just completely fine. So, yeah, no, first takes, first takes. Yeah, yeah, C4. takes, takes, bishop a7, and then rook a8. I mean, yeah. isn't black just drawn quite easily? Yeah, queen d7, and then you have queen ah, e6. Ah, queen d7, queen e2. Yeah, this yeah is I mean, you, you're right, it's, it's probably a draw, but yeah, maybe you can go like queen b7, rook d8, and some kind of yeah, a4. Yeah, it can be a little bit complicated, yeah. Yeah, yeah this is true. That's why I guess he's thinking. I mean, he wants oh, to but, just oh, find but C4 a clear was played. Ah, oh, it was played, yeah. Yeah, they and he didn't take a seven. He went queen d two. But I mean, okay, now after I mean, just a six. A six rook c one. A six or queen a four. I mean, a six rook c one. I think is the point. And rook c seven. Yeah. That's the idea, or. I mean, mm -hmm. rook c1 and then depends what black does. Well, actually, I realized, actually, you know what, though? You are attacking h6, I just realized, maybe. Oh, I'm yes. Probably not, though, because <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. Queen I forgot about it. Yeah. But, I mean, Queen e2 is so it's not really, it's not really a threat, but yeah. Yeah, I completely I, I, I guess if I look the position, though, to me, I feel like queen a6 is a move that I would consider here. Just queen a6 to attack a3, because you can't go bishop c5 because of queen c6. Okay. But he plays a6, which of course looks fine too. Yeah, I guess rook c1 now should be played because you still can't take on h6. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if you take on h6, you lose e2, and yeah, it still should be a draw. Yeah, rook c1 looks nicer, and this, if queen e4 check, then just f3. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then queen e6 because you still I guess, keep an eye on I don't know, Bishop. 
Yeah, it's. I mean, it's just. It's just not enough. I mean, if it was like a, a normal situation, we would say that it would end in a draw. I, I don't think even our team mm-hmm. would try. Probably. I don't yeah. see much reason to do so. Mm-hmm. We do have Levis game, which is more interesting. <laughs> yeah, I, I actually, I didn't, I have, I didn't, haven't looked at all at any of that this morning. Um, Some Kings pull Indian that up as well. His game is. Let's see if I can find it one second. Yeah, it kind of transposed from. Well, we we still source that it will it will be a hippo, but. Uh, okay, so no. what what was it? It was. Like. Ah, so it turned into a Modern. King's Indian. Okay, mm-hmm. interesting. Yeah, he played e5 like later. Yeah, okay, so, so if I think about this, and... if I think about this position, this is like an h3, um, h3 King's Indian, I think. Except <laughs> the bishop's on f1, not g2. Can you guess a the Harlem opening? shake variation? Yeah. Yeah. It was perk actually. This right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I, I see it now. Yeah, I see, I see this opening. Um. I don't. I don't know. Like, I mean, you have a lot of experience playing the king, playing against King Zinnia's white Vita, but I feel like whenever you get these positions with like e5 and f5 versus like say it's never easy. H3, it's never easy. I I felt like it's easier to play for white than black because like it's it's very hard to push f4 and e4 is very committal too because you give up d4 and h4. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, in this particular position, I'm not so sure that mm-hmm. uh, because you already have this a5 and the other knight coming to c5 right. so you also got basically all you wanted right with black exactly mm-hmm. i would feel more comfortable if my pawn was on f4 and you have played e4 or something like this uh, when it's closed mm-hmm. then yeah. i would prefer white more but mm-hmm. right now i'm not so sure also, I was thinking, I feel like in those King's Indians, these H3 King's Indians, normally you go Queen C2 and you castle Queen's side. Like, I feel like if White had the Queen on C2 and the Bishop on G2, White should be probably completely fine. But it feels like you're missing a tempo here, kind of. Yeah, yeah. For White, yeah. to me at least. Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. I agree. But so... this is the more interesting game <laughs> compared to <laughs> <laughs> what we have there. So what do you yeah. think he will do? Will he push again with uh yeah i mean okay for, for like with the computer evaluation it says f4 and black is better but i mean yeah but this is a bit it's very committal yeah that's that's why actually I, this position is very hard to play because mm-hmm. i feel like for black it's much trickier than white like white has a pretty clear idea you want to go like queen c2 bishop g2 knight h4 something something like this where it's for black you have to decide where you push an e4 or f4 that's really what it hinges on you have two pushes. Um, of course, you can put the knight on c5 first, but at some point you're gonna have to push e4 or f4, and black has to make the decision when to like break the tension, and just like or not break the tension, but like op- open up the board. Mm-hmm. Is this a tournament where uh, Levy is trying to become a GM, like to get a norm or something? Mm-hmm. Exactly. Yes. And he has a couple of norms, I guess. Oh uh, no, no, he doesn't have any yet. I think I don't think he has any. Ah, okay. But yeah, this looks um Yeah, tricky position. I feel like this game is probably going to have some kind of a uh, a time scramble at the end where both players don't have a lot of time and whoever is better under the pressure will probably win the game. That's my guess. But I it's Oh, knight c5. Hard to play. Yeah, see, I, knight c5 is what, what Levy plays, which I understand. But now, yeah, bishop e3 is a very good move. And now you're like in, I, I mean. Now you have to put a knight I, on e4, I guess. Yeah, but can't I just trade and then, I don't know, go like uh, knight d, I guess knight d2, there might be some some trick. Takes, takes, and knight takes, d2. Yeah, knight d2, and then bishop d2. Knight e2, I can I'm not play sure, knight c5 like back. Queen h5. Maybe I can play knight c5 back, trying to play f4. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Actually, maybe I, knight... I, I like black's position. Looks kind of Yeah, nice. I mean, I think objectively it's... It's um, it's hard to judge, but I figure, yeah, knight, knight e4 makes the most sense. I think, for, for a human. Do you think Levy will play b6 though? 
knowing him. Oh, by the way, apparently someone said Magnus blundered. Did, wait, what just happened in Magnus's game? Uh, wait, did he just hang a pawn oh, on e6? Wait, what? Whoa, 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 what, what, what just happened? Oh, yes. Magnus is blundered. Oh, wow. Did, he, did he make a mouse slip? Did he mean to go queen e6? Yeah, it could be. It could be. Because I don't see any sensible reason why black would play queen e5 and just give up the pawn on a6. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's what? a mouse slip. It has to be, it, yeah. <laughs> so he meant to play queen e6. Yeah, he or... had to, yeah. Yeah, yeah. He, I mean, queen e5 makes no sense. I mean, it just makes no <laughs> sense in, in any world. That's and so weird. Artemis well, at least, at least he did not play queen d5. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, man. Well, you, know you know it's a mouse slip because also you hang h6. White can also trade and take h6. Like, it makes no sense at all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's it's a mouse slip for sure. And it's funny that Magnus has done these mouse slips. I think most among the top players, he really needs yeah. a good mouse. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. He's done it. I I feel like everybody I think has had like maybe one one or two maybe, but I feel like Magnus has probably had like I feel like there are like five or six examples. Like it's a lot. Yeah. It's, a lot. It's, a, it's so strange though. I mean, somebody buy a good mouse for Magnus. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, I mean, he, he needs he needs a good old Logitech mouse. That's what he needs. Oh, now at least the yeah, match I mean, is interesting. Losing, right? We have something to do now. Uh, yeah, yeah it's... Now, now it's now it's game on again. This is this is gonna be fun. I think Queen C4 looks natural to just consolidate and push A4. Mm-hmm. Like Queen C4 also attacks on F7 and then play A4 next. Yeah. Ah, but oh. he played, uh, actually he played bishop f4, but now queen b5? How winning is, I mean, this, this is still very good, but is this cleanly winning or not? You mean after queen c4, queen b5? Or after bishop oh, f4? Oh, sorry, is uh. it not up? To, oh, I thought king uh. f7 was played. Yeah, yeah, bishop f4, queen b5 was played, yeah. yeah. I mean, it feels winning, but I... I so, uh, can it I... It feels can winning, I, but it's tricky. Can I take and go rook c7? Yeah, rook c7. c7 bishop f6? Mm-hmm. And then I don't know, like e4 maybe, or maybe a4. I thought rook to a7 maybe, just to. Mm, just to force the a pawn up, yeah. But then yeah. rook b2. King f1. Yeah, king f1. And you'll go to f3, right? If I check and go back, you go to f3. But g5, right. I mean. But <sighs> it, it feels wrong to put the rook like in front of the pawn. I must say that. Mm -hmm. So I'm not entirely sure if this is the way. I mean, the way that I think about this is probably the setup you want is you want like the rook on c4 to stop bishop d4 because that 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 hits f2 and goes to a7. So you want like rook c4 and then somehow put the bishop on b6 and go a4 a5 if you can get it. That, that feels like an optimal dream. setup because <laughs> you can't get the rook behind the pawn. Maybe you yeah, can get it like after a5. yeah after rook c7 bishop f6. Uh, you can play bishop e3 and then play bishop c5 probably. That looks... Mm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, that makes a lot of sense. Yes. Oh, yeah. We'll find out, I think. Rook c7 played. Wow, I'm yeah, so yeah, curious that, that, that makes that's a, that's, that, that's, very, that's a very good technical concept. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah, thanks to Magnus, we have now a lot <laughs> of... Uh, maybe it was done for content. It's like, oh, <laughs> this match no is chance. so boring. I have, have to spice it up. No, he doesn't have a very active YouTube channel. So I think, I don't think he was going for a mini clip. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's working. He's working for his company. You know, he's like, oh no, Valerieza withdrew. I have to work for boss now. <laughs> mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah. So G5 is played. So obviously, well, not obvious. I, yeah, probably you have to trade because otherwise black takes on H4 and... Bishop yeah, yeah, six, yeah. So you trade. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So takes takes bishop e3. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, this is very, saying... very close to winning for white, I feel like. Heard you saying that Levis' game is more interesting. He could, he could not bear with this. <laughs> yeah. <That's true. laughs> when we started watching Levis' game, I think he had it. <laughs> <laughs> he had it on the second computer. <laughs> second monitor. Yeah. Wait, so wait, 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 wait. Magnus just hung the pawn on e7 or not? Yes. Um, I guess. Because rook a5 is rook a7. Right. Wait. So how do you take it? Bishop f8? Also, there's rook a7. 
Yeah. I guess it's uh, he's he's in the mood to give mods. Take and it, uh, it yeah, and Artemiev is not taking it, but oh, now he can play a five. Yeah. Okay. I mean, you, of course you play a five and then rook a two. And then, ah, then rook six and a six. Rook c six, a six, a seven. Game over. Yeah, it's just unstoppable now. Wait, wait, wait. This is just game. Rook c six, a. It's just GG. Magnus sandbagging. <laughs> Very strange. Very, very strange. Yeah. Yeah, so, yeah I mean, what, what is possible. this? Yeah, this is like complete drawn position. And yeah. we are acting as if the mouse slip was normal. But for me, it's still not normal. Like, <laughs> you know, just queen e6 and the game would have drawn. And yeah, yeah, no, it's, it's very bizarre. So very bizarre. Now I think you just play a7 and black wants to yeah, play bishop, bishop d4. Yeah, and then d4, trade, and rook c7. Game takes, over. Takes rook c7. Yeah, and you win one of these pawns. Yeah, that has to be lost. Wow. a7, bishop d4 played, yep. I'm, I'm uh, going to say one thing, though. Where, where, um, where, where, where are all these mouseups whenever I play Magnus? They, they magically <laughs> never happen when I play. That, that's the one thing I will say that's very frustrating is like, and it's not even just like when I play Magnus, but in general, when you look at games of other people, you see some of these blunders. Yeah. And you're just like, it's like, why don't they happen in my games? Like in general, it's true. Like you, exactly. you, you always see it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I was looking at the games after I got knocked out and then I realized some games were like hilarious because one is having an advantage of plus five and then he loses that game. And I was like, mm -hmm. why not me? You know, where does, where does this go? <laughs> and it's just so strange. They never do it. I feel like against me, maybe I invoke like the best chess from them. I don't know. <laughs> they start playing good all of a sudden. Yeah. Yeah, no, I mean, it, it's very strange because like I've seen it many times where like I see games of other players and you're like, well, wait, this is just terrible. There's a blunder here, a blunder there. And then like when you play them, it's like, wait, but where was that blunder when I played them? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. It's just a test for you. Yeah. What doesn't destroy us makes us stronger, right? Yeah. Okay, so he resigns. So so it is 2-1 yeah. now. So we are going to get a fourth game. Wait, did he resign? Oh, okay. Yep, it's over. Where do you see results on chess.com events page? Like, how do you see uh, the On result? the right-hand right side, I think. Yeah, you have all... Ah, like, on the right-hand side. Oh, okay. So the chat can't see it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Because it's cropped out, right? That's why. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is true. Yeah. Well, at least we get drama now. We get we get a fourth game, thankfully. Yeah, at least there's Very a thankfully. match going on. Should we go nice. back to the levy game? Yeah, sure. We have to. <laughs> Sadly. We should also say that that game is very, very interesting. So Magnus does something else in the fourth game mm -hmm. to make it more interesting again. So what's going on here? Yeah, so see, this game is getting spicy. I think because Levy put the knight on d7, you have to go e4, knight e5 now. Because now f4 is never really an idea. I think white can just take and go like bishop d4. And I think yeah, white's yeah. doing well. Right, so I right. think I think I think the good thing for Levy is that he he has to play e4. He doesn't even really have to decide which pawn push it is. I think he just goes e4, knight e5, and it looks pretty good for Black. Maybe he's king at seven though. I feel. He will uh, I think he'll go king at seven and try to keep the tension alive. Makes sense too. Yeah. No, it does make sense. But king h7 isn't there? Maybe knight h4 now. And f4. I want to say bishop d3 or queen c2. Sorry, I didn't follow the line. So after queen d2. So, what? Yes, you see, so after queen d2, if black goes king h7, I think white can play knight h4, right? Yeah, it looks like a useful move. But maybe I can play f4? Yeah, and then I thought queen c2. Mm, to move back king to bishop. G8, just, I don't know, bishop, probably not bishop c5. Maybe bishop d2 and then knight e4. Bishop, yeah, bishop d2, bishop d2. Yeah, yeah. No, this. Yeah, I mean, like... it's, it's a very tricky position. Right, right. These positions are always tricky when you have e5, f5 against like g3, h3. Which pawn do you push, e4 or f4? Right. Uh, right. Maybe queen g5. Ah, queen. Okay, so okay, let me get there. So, so yeah, so king h7, knight h4, f4, queen c2, king g8, bishop d2, queen g5. Yeah, but you're not threatening anything, so I think I just go bishop g2. 
Knight f6. I mean, still, yeah, still very complicated, though. Very, very complicated. But you always have queen g6 if nothing works out, like, at least. Mm -hmm. And, it, yeah, I feel like we did something wrong with black. We allowed too much play. Yeah, I, th I think I think e4, I mean, e4 to me looks like the... But, it, I mean, again, it's very committal because when you play e4, you also give up, like, d4 and f4. And now white has a blockade on the dark squares. Like, f f4 is never a move now. So it's, mm -hmm. it's very tricky. Um, mm -hmm. The other thing that I think is very tricky for both these players, and I, I, I don't know if this is true or not, but Levy's not a King Zinian player. And I don't think Casa Corley probably plays these sorts th these sorts of lines against the King's Indian. Um, so I think both players are very unfamiliar with the with the pawn structure and, and what exactly the plans are. But you know Levy, so do you think he'll play e4 or he'll go for something slow? If you had to, um, I think it. I, I mean, I don't know what his what his mindset is. I mean, I think a lot depends on his mindset. But but based on the opening that he's played, um, trying to be aggressive. I would kind of expect e4. If he doesn't play e4, it means he's too nervous or too tentative. Um, but it, that's that's all it comes down to. But yeah, I, I would say, yeah, I mean, it's it's a tough position. It's a tough position to play, and I think both players are sort of out of their out of their comfort zone, and that's like one of the things that um, that that we'll see who who handles sort of the pressure and the uncertainty better here. Yeah, the engine definitely prefers e4 than f4. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If e4, knight goes to h4, right? And yeah, then maybe knight, knight g2, knight, knight f4, knight e5. Yeah. I don't know. It seems, I mean, it makes makes a lot of sense. I mean, because you have bishop f6 at some point to hit the knight on h4. But again, I mean, it, it is tricky. It, it is a very tricky position to play. It's very fluid. The pawn structure is is um, is tricky. Yeah, White will will go with the knight to f4, I guess. To yeah, I I mean, you, you know what I would say though, having played the King's Indian a lot, is like when I look at the structure, my my in, intuition, my feel is that basically, if White can get the setup he wants with like Bishop g2 and Knight h4, if White has time, I I just feel intuitively based on playing the King's Indian for many years that White is probably fine if not a little bit better and so I would just assume that you have to push forward here and that's probably why I would play e4 more than any other reason it's just I feel like White is just like one tempo behind in the in like getting the bishop to g2 or like the knight to h4 and so I would I would be looking to force the issue immediately. Mm -hmm. Let's see if Levy has this King's Indian instincts. Mm -hmm. Usually but I, I would add action. one thing as well, and this this is why, like, I mean, I think you, you should play as many openings as possible because this sort of structure in this King's Indian, if you never play the King's Indian and you're unfamiliar with it, it's very hard to know what the, what the right ideas are here. And so, like, if you only play, like, one opening, you can get very far, but your progression at some point will stop because you're going you're gonna to end up in positions with different pawn structures, different setups that you don't really know what the plan is. And without having played some of these openings and you don't understand it, that's how it goes. Agreed. Actually, also, the thing is, when you're younger, it's better to play as many openings as possible because when you get older or you are at a certain level then you have more to lose because you will play like more important events but in childhood mm -hmm. you're afford you can afford more of uh, you know mistakes or more of like experimenting with the openings experiments yeah because later on it gets tougher let's say if somebody is a very good player and then he becomes 2600 and then he's you know trying to get into the elite and suddenly he has to change openings and it won't be that easy unless he had played before. Yeah, mm -hmm. Levy is 25. I mean, it's not too late to experiment. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes I feel like Magnus is experimenting when he's playing online. Yeah, we saw in the last game. <laughs> that was a good experiment. <laughs> Queen, yeah, I mean, Queen E5 was an experiment of his mouse. I think <laughs> I think he might get a sponsorship soon with him with a, with a new mouse. But I... I would give one story, which is that I remember when I was working with Kasparov in 2011, and um, one thing that he said was he said that when Kramnik started playing E4, E4 on move one after he became the world champion, that it was a very smart move that he started experimenting with something completely different. 
versus just sticking to what he had been playing uh, his entire career. Why was so it it, even 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 if you get to world champion like Kramnik did, there's still room for experimentation. Why was it smart? Like, did he specify? Well, well, because basically he was broadening his, he was broadening his repertoire and trying to see if he could make it work. Because he had already accomplished, like he had already gotten to the very top, and he lost some very bad games, uh, especially in the Nidorf. Um, but he did. He was able to play E4, I think, for the rest of his career after that. Right. Also, I think now recently Levon is the one who made a major shift to E4. Previously, mm -hmm. he only used to play d4 and this English type of positions. But now he exclusively plays e4. Uh, mm -hmm. And what I saw is he started off with more of the sidelines. Let's say in Italian, he used to go c3, d4. And then slowly he made changes into like the mainline theory. Now he goes for Berlin endgame altogether. So more comfortable with that. Mm -hmm. But I think it was a hard change for him because initially he lost quite a few games. Um, yeah. In Night Off, for example. Yeah, I mean, that's always the kind of the the, the danger is like you, you can lose a lot of games. But I mean, I think for your overall improvement or being able to, to, to just play, it's a it, it's something that if you can do it and stomach those 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 like three or four really bad losses, then, then it makes a lot of sense. Yeah, yeah, I think it's <laughs> it's like simply like a metaphor for whatever new you try in your life as well. Yeah, initially it's gonna suck, <laughs> but later on it gets better. <laughs> right, exactly. Yeah, yeah. No, that's that's definitely true. Um. Yeah. So, are right, we we don't we don't have any moves, do we? No, no not, not yet. yet. Not yet. Yeah. Yeah, I was also checking the game of uh, James Canty, uh, but it it looks pretty. Pretty equal. Not sure if there is any anything's gonna happen here. Do you have it? Is playing in which one? I um. D or which one is he playing in? Uh, I am C. I am C. Okay. Who are you talking about, guys? Oh, we're talking about James Canty. He's uh he's a streamer. He's like about twenty two hundred. He's playing uh, one of the I am norm events, uh, the, the C group. Uh, Actually, I think okay. there, there's probably a link. Um, but it looks very, very dry, very, very yeah. dry kind of position. Oh, actually, no, 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 it was. By the way, I think I should uh, take off soon because tomorrow <laughs> morning it's pretty late in India right now. It's like 11 and tomorrow morning I have to fly to play the Olympiad. So. Uh, right. okay. I would I would like to take off in a few minutes. Sure, that's okay. that's, that's yeah. fine by all means. Yeah. Yeah, yeah and we, he we can uh, we can go on a short break. Sure, sure. Okay. Are, are you, actually, uh, so before you go, then just a couple of questions. So you're playing the online Olympiad. Do you have any other um? Do you have any other like events coming up, or what are your plans for the next like three to four months for the rest of the year? I think I might play this um, Grand Suisse in latvia although there's mm -hmm. so much issue with the visa like the travel restrictions but i i am hopeful that i'll able to play there are you playing uh way? hopefully i'm playing yeah my intention is to play but again i don't know with travel if it's if it's going to be possible or not so if travel permits you would end up playing i, I will play yes um mm -hmm. and you also played the u.s championship right it's no no i, I chose to skip that they they, they they said i'm playing but i'm not playing Ah, uh, really Oh, that's that's news. Yeah, yeah, no, I'm not. I basically, I had to choose between playing the U.S. Championship or uh, the Grand Swiss, and my chat, especially, I did some polls on it, and they were uh, they they were big they were big on me playing the Grand Swiss. So because of my chat, I'm I had to pick one of the one or the other, and I'm I'm going to be playing uh playing the Grand Swiss. Oh, interesting that you decided to go on the poll <laughs> to make this uh, decision. <laughs> yeah, nice. yeah. Why not? Why not? <laughs> nice, nice. So I guess I'll see you there. Hopefully, yeah, hopefully, yep. Um, and yep, Maria, that's, that's I think the plan. You too. But that, that's great. So, all, all right. So, I guess, yeah, you said you said you, you want to go in and like you have to, you probably have an early morning flight. So, yeah. uh, once again, it was, it was great talking to you and having you on for the commentary. And, um, and hopefully, hopefully, you'll, you'll lead India to victory in the online Olympiad. And uh, if, 
for for my chat if you guys haven't seen his channel it is he is on youtube i think some of the mods have spammed the link so make sure to check him out over on youtube so big shout out to uh indian grandmaster beat it gujarati are you are you number one yet or uh, i mean number yet. one outside no. of vishy obviously but yeah yeah no vishy is still number one and then i'm number two right now number two nice Closely, nice yeah, very good you. very very good <laughs> <laughs> thank you guys thank you for having me it was fun i think yeah, we should do more of you, you know fun uh, collab streams i think that would be nice absolutely yeah, maybe it's a battle maybe it's a battle <laughs> yeah why not Great. Well, why we'll not? have a good one and yeah hopefully we'll see you soon thank you bye guys All right. bye okay awesome awesome chat uh that was a short stream with uh, hikaru um, it was nice if you wanted to watch i why why is everyone saying burn at the end what happened what was the burn did i miss something who was roasted wait i was roasted wait what was the burn i, I missed it what was the burn guys I I don't see the burn like it was just a normal chat normal uh, discussion Ah number 2 acha obviously after Vishy acha that one <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh okay oh that's true that could yeah that can count as a burn <laughs> Oh by the way guys I might not stream for the next few days because I'm going to Chennai tomorrow and I'll meet uh, Sagar and rest of the gang so I will be shooting some of the vlogs but mainly I'll try I'll be focusing on the event so I just wanted to make sure that you know that you guys are aware that my course practical decision making is live and I have extended the sale for a couple of days because I really uh, missed out on you know uh, telling you guys about it in advance so I have extended the sale it's only for 2699 there is now 10% off it's from 4th to 7th october and i'm going to be teaching like four days one and a half hours of session each somya is also going to take three sessions one hour each and there are going to be two events as well uh, where you guys can play and we have a whatsapp group where we send in puzzles uh, regularly on the themes which we teach and you will also get the feedback on you know if you have some doubts already so you can check it out the link is in the description um, and there is 10% off for limited time so if you want to get it it's the right time to get it and it's from 4th to 7th october but the sale is for 3 days so do check that out uh, before leaving and chat uh, what is up i'll just speak to you for few minutes before i leave let me see if i can change the screen mm Okay, there is no camera. One second. Nice. Uh, I did switch to the old camera, and I did see in the chat that you guys noticed it. Very, very observant. Very observant because the new camera ka battery was not charged, but now it's there. Um, is the streaming setup getting better? I hope so. It is. So funny had asked uh, Vijit got two times winning position against Magnus but was not able to convert and becomes draw. What are the exact reasons for this? I told you, funny. It's like his mouse works better against me. Uh, in the chat, I see where can we get the course. It's simple, Ashish. You can just click on the link which is there in the description, or go to Vijit dot Graphy, and you get all the details. You can send an email. There is also phone number which you can contact. if you have any doubts at all sam is asking hi i'm 1000 rated player any advice on overcoming anxiety and stress while playing chess you know everyone gets stressed sam but those who use black lotus actually feel less stressed studies have proved so i use it even before coming on the stream i was meditating so use black lotus it actually makes a big effect um samay i thought samay was coming but today i got to know that he might not come i i really really wish that samay joins us in chennai i really wish that i called him a few days ago 
and he disconnected my phone call and after that we don't have any communication but i think he's busy he's working out so i didn't want to disturb him mm. i yeah i also got a haircut actually just today wanted to look professional before i go to uh, you know olympia i hope it's fine it looks good by the way there's also going to be a vlog released in 2 3 days on the channel so if you haven't subscribed i mean i think most of you have but still you yeah, have to say it you know i know you have but still a reminder never hurts uh, and you know vedika i was so con- uh, trying to convince vedika to uh, come to chennai but college you know she cannot miss it so it will be pity that she is not joining me at least initially but sagar bhai is there sagar bhai is coming to chennai there will be lot of sagar bhai in the vlogs for sure mm. what's any any questions guys before i leave before i end the stream anything i think the games have begun so if you haven't by the way huge shout out to uh, hikaru for having me i think all of you do know Uh, but i'll quickly uh, mention his twitch channel and let's uh, send him some love from youtube so his id is uh, www.twitchtv/hikaru maybe we can do a small raid and end the stream um, let's see if uh, i can pull it up one second Let's try to read him. Uh, so, so, what do we have? Yeah. We have. Um, okay, our time of his play to Sicilian because he even after winning the last game, he has to win this one too. So, so no Karakam. Magnus has played this bishop b five check. Thank you guys for the read. Looks very nice. A four. <laughs> Knight of six, knight c three, g six, a five, bishop b seven, castle. So we're still, I mean, still pretty early on in the game. Mm-hmm. Um. It's all still theory, right? I assume it's some kind of theory. I mean, I, the one thing I would say is that Magnus has always been very, very good in these uh, these Ross Limo type of positions with this Bishop B5 check. Um, so uh, yeah, thank you so much, Vita, for the the YouTube raid. Thank you so much, man. Um, anyway, <laughs> wow. <laughs> all right. uh, no, that's, that's a joke, YouTube obviously, because you can't raid from another platform. <laughs> but anyway, yeah. Uh, <laughs> but, but yeah. Um. Any. Anyway. Uh. Yeah. Big shout. Big shout to to Vidit, of course. Uh. <laughs> thanks. Thanks so much for uh, for joining us this morning. And of course, all the best to in all the best to Vida as well as the Indian team as they plan the online chess Olympiad tomorrow. All right. So what has happened? Okay. We at least uh, threw uh, Hikaru off with the YouTube raid. As I was first thrown off when I came from YouTube, uh, from Twitch to YouTube, and I asked, you know, what is the procedure for uh. raid so <laughs> okay guys thank you thank you so much uh, for joining in i'll see you no streams but lot of vlogs coming up and a quick reminder to check out uh, vidit.graphy where you can get all the information you can go down yahan pe practical decision making and you can get all the information if you have any doubts check it out so it's 6 hours of my coaching and 3 hours of somia's coaching and much more so thank you thank you thank you thank you chat see you soon <laughs> no copyright don't worry there will be no copyright uh, i'll try to record some exciting vlogs you know show you behind the scenes of olympia and i hope you guys will be rooting i'll get to practice and try to do my best in the tournament thank you chat thank you bye 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 There's no need to rush so let's just take our time Dropping everything cuz you're stuck on my mind my mind
so just sit with me talking to the night until the morning building can mystery i don't think i ever want to go come closer next to me trying to find another way to say this but i think i think we were meant to be oh we were meant to be Through the night and through the morning building can't history. 